I recently built this amplifier rack which holds three amps and a DSP. Now I built this amp rack in the location for the factory subwoofer so the panel looks like this. But I want to modify this panel so that it's more functional. As you can imagine, having all these electronics behind that panel can allow some heat to build up. So I wanna add some fans and make a cooling system. When I interviewed Tom Miller of Musicar a year or two back, he showed me this awesome panel that he had made in a similar project and I wanted to try something similar here on the channel. This is definitely going to be more of an advanced build due to all the small tolerances that I have to deal with with the fans and some of the other things that we are adding. So how did I design and cut these pieces? What are these holes in the new panel for? And how did I cut the OEM panel to match my new pieces perfectly? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Without further ado, let's design, build, and install. To get things underway, I've removed the panel out of the vehicle. The only thing you guys missed here is panels like this are often heat staked in and this is what a heat stake kind of looks like. And what I did to separate these from the main panel is I just drilled them out and kind of ground them down in order to pop it off and separate it. I'll be able to show you guys what I mean in a second here because we need to take this subwoofer grill off as well. So along with having the panel, I also needed to get three of these computer fans. These fans that I'm using are known for being exceptionally quiet, even at full speed. I'll put a link for them down in the video description. In this particular case, I went with 80 millimeter fans. You can see that they're gray in color to kind of match the interior of the vehicle. And there are also four pin PWM fans, which will allow us to control their speed. Let's get the subwoofer grill removed, and then I can start planning the layout of these fans. So I've got this dinky little subwoofer grill removed now. The next thing I need to do is I wanna take this carpet off just because I'm going to need to reupholster this anyhow and it's gonna make it easier to make my cuts like I need to once I transition this over to the router. So let's go ahead and carefully peel this away. With the carpet now removed, we need to come up with a little bit more of a firm plan. Now I know that I want the fans in this general area right here, and the reasoning for that is the DSP on the amplifier rack, it comes up to about right here, and then I have a bunch of clearance, and this will fire back right onto both of the amplifiers and kind of spread that air distribution out. It is going to be a bit of a tight fit, and I'm hoping I can pull this off because not only do I wanna add these fans, I also want to add this guy right here. This is a little micro USB port and it will connect to the DSP. And the idea is if I ever do need to plug in and tune the DSP, which I do quite often, I don't want to have to remove this whole panel. I want to just be able to simply plug into this. But we don't want this showing because you know it's just kind of ugly. We want to hide this behind a small little panel too. So we got to come up with a plan. I did sketch a bit of a design here. I know that I want my insert to kind of match the overall shape of this. I definitely want this line here to be kind of parallel to that curve. I know that we're gonna have holes for three fans. I know that I wanna use a portion of the plastic to fill the rest of this subwoofer hole here. And probably as part of a mounting platform, I'm going to drill some holes in this and have some screws come in from the backside tapped into that plastic. And I know that I also want a little access cover for this like I talked about. So this is my rough sketch. Let's come up with a more firm engineered design. Guys, I'm really excited to check this out. I've spent a couple of hours designing this and here is what I came up with. So let's get rid of a few of the pieces so I can explain this. First of all, we have the base and you can see this extension here that is to fill up the subwoofer hole. And I didn't mention this yet and I'm sure that it's gonna come up. Why didn't I just use one big fan the size of the subwoofer? In my opinion, I think that would look kind of tacky. I just like the way that this looks a lot better and I like the idea of using the three fans kind of in a line here. So this part of the plate will fill up that hole. It also has some holes in the plate so that I can 
can use a mechanical fastener to attach this to the OEM panel. If we zoom in here, you can see that I have this whole location that will allow for that mini USB port. I'm also incorporating a really cool design idea here that I saw on a SEMA build that was done by Jeremy Carlson of Avant Garde Design. I turned on a couple of other pieces to explain this. What this hole right here where the mouse is will do is I'm going to have a small little cover panel in here that's of course going to cover that USB port. There'll be a magnet in this location here and then there's going to be this little port cover that also has a magnet embedded in it. His design idea that I'm borrowing, he did it with a much larger panel, but basically by having this clearance here and this void, if you push your finger in this location here, that cover panel is gonna hinge on this line right here and basically separate the magnet force and allow that little piece to pop right out. I think this is a really neat functional design idea, and if you're wondering, this hole here will be covered because I'm gonna have another really, really thin piece of acrylic on top of this piece that will have my logo on it and it will cover up so you won't see that magnet. So that's our base piece and then we of course are going to have a flush trim ring around the outside. This will give the overall assembly a little bit more thickness and it will also allow us to transition our carpet and tuck it down into this perimeter around the outside and that's because we're going to have an insert here that will mate up against that carpet I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this overall design. I might add some mesh into the actual acrylic itself. We'll see later in the build. And that's that port cover that I showed you before right there. And then finally, you can't see it now because it's on the back side. But if we look at the back of the panel, I've created this fan mounting flange that gives me all the mounting holes for the fans. I'm going to cut these holes at the minor diameter so that I can tap threads into the acrylic. And then I also have a little spot here to allow for a fan controller. All the pieces that you see here are going to be made out of acrylic and acrylic is a little bit more expensive. So I wanna test out the fitment of this on the actual OEM panel first. So I'm gonna cut it with some card board. Definitely looks like the round part here is going to match up nicely with that factory subwoofer grill hole. That way we can drill through those tabs and drill and tap into this on the back side. Another good thing to check here, I want to make sure that my little USB mounting flange lines up with the mounting holes, which it does. That looks good. That'll fit well. I like it. Definitely looks like our shape matches up to the OEM styling really well. I think this is going to look super cool, especially once you account for the fact that you're not going to see any of this curve here because I'm going to body work it and just completely flush that into the panel. You're only going to see this insert right here. And also remember that I'm still going to need to make some cuts for this piece to sit down flush inside. And I'm gonna do that by saving the off cut, the outside of when I make this actual piece with my acrylic. I'm gonna save that outside shape so that I can temporarily attach it here. And we'll do some modifications to this piece by cutting on the router. I think that's gonna look pretty cool, but who knows, it could turn out to be a disaster. We're gonna find out. The next step here, since we know our sample is going to work well, I can start making these cuts out of actual acrylic on the laser. Now really quick, before we get into the laser cutting, I do wanna thank our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. A question I commonly get when adding a secondary battery in the vehicle, do you need a fuse on the positive battery lead? And the answer is yes. Remember that a fuse, the point of it is to protect our wiring. So New Concepts has a great solution for this with their FBT battery terminal. It's difficult to see, but there's actually a layer of plastic between these two pieces of metal, which means that this half is isolated from this half. So this half is always connected to the battery, and the only way for electricity to flow to this half is through this fuse. These also have a really unique way of connecting wires to them with these compression fittings. To learn more about these, check out new concepts at the link down in the video description. Now a couple notes for you guys while we watch the laser go to work. What if you don't have a laser? How would you cut that initial cardboard piece? You could actually print that to scale using a normal inkjet printer and then just carefully cut it out with scissors and lay the paper on your panel to make sure that everything fits. The reason I'm using a laser in the first place is there's so many small little holes and little intricacies for things like the USB port and for the fans and the fan mounting holes. It's nice to have that precision. If you don't own a laser machine, I recommend checking out a maker space in a city near you. And you can also research and see if you can find a sign making shop. A lot of sign production shops will have a laser machine and if you can give them the files, they can probably cut the parts for you. So let's do a quick review of all the pieces that I've got cut here now. 
now I have this base piece and this is what's actually going to permanently attach to the panel and be bonded to it. Now we also have a trim piece. This outside trim piece will be permanently attached to the base there and that will allow the carpet to form over inside to this insert. And then as part of the insert, I have this little cover here that will go over our cover for the USB port. The other piece I wanted to make sure that I held onto is this outside piece here. And that's because even though this is the outside piece that we would normally throw away, I'm gonna use it as a template to cut my perfect shape on the router for this part here. And then of course also have this piece that will go on the back side of the panel there and will allow me to hold my fans along with my little fan control board. I now have this cut out rough cut. In other words, I left a little bit of material so that we can clean it up on the router. And in the meantime, this did have a bunch of these carpet fuzzies kind of still attached to it. So I took some sandpaper and just lightly went along the panel, which allowed the carpet to kind of bunch up into these little worms that I then removed and pulled away. Now, because we are using carpet to ultimately finish this panel, I'm not too worried about this hot melt glue that is left on from the factory because you're never going to see that through the carpet. If I was I was going to use something like a vinyl type material it would show through so I would need to figure out a way to somehow remove this from the panel but I want to keep this OEM looking anyhow so carpet it is. So I know that I want to drill and tap some holes so that I can use machine screws so rather than wasting time drilling I just accounted for that drill hole size while I was cutting this on the laser and now I can just add the threads using this tap. I'm going to use some black 832 by 3 8 inch long machine screws. These fit perfectly on these fans. It'll allow me to go through. So then I just gotta tap it with this tap right here. In the meantime, I've taken some thin tape and I've carefully marked out my position once again of this inside shape, and that will allow me to line up the outer shape once I apply a little bit of my own hot glue to temporarily hold it in place. I did a little bit of a test with an acrylic scrap and with the scrap that I had cut out from the inside there of gluing these two together using the hot glue, and it was very difficult to pull the two apart once the glue had set up with only a small amount of the glue. So I really only am going to need a small amount here. I always like to test just to see how strong it's going to be. That way I don't overdo it and end up having a panel that can't be completely removed. At the router, I'm using a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit in order to cut the OEM panel. Now, because this panel is curved and has a varying height, I do need to stop my cut every once in a while and readjust the height of the router bit out of the table so that that bearing stays against my template. This is why it's beneficial to have this custom router bit that has these four bearings to have that extra height. Don't forget that I'll have a link to it along with all the other tools and materials listed down in the video description. Now that the OEM panel is cut, you can see that my piece that fits inside fits really nice like a perfect puzzle piece matches up with that outside profile. And the reason this is going to become important is when we go to adhere these two different pieces together, we don't really want a huge gap between that we have to bridge with adhesive and it will be better for our body filler process when we go to fill the edges. So now I need to get my template removed here. Next up, I need to attach all the acrylic pieces to each other using this acrylic cement. I set the pieces on top of each other and use the acrylic cement to weld the seam. I had to attach this top trim piece to the main piece, and then I also attached the fan bracket on the back side. And do note that any surface that I can leave the masking paper on for the time being, I'd leave it in place. Again, that way we don't damage any of these surfaces while we're doing the sanding and body filler process. So the next step is I need to attach this full assembly to my OEM piece. And before I do that, I wanna rough up the edges of our acrylic along with the edges of our factory panel. Now that I have everything good and roughed up, when I go to bond these two together, the adhesive will get a good bite. Finally, in the meantime, you can see that I've added a few mechanical fasteners through the locations where it made sense in order to hold this panel to this panel 
in place while I do the glue process and that's coming up next. So in the next video, along with picking the perfect adhesive to bond these two together, we're going to need to do some bodywork process to smooth everything out and we're going to need to do the upholstery process to wrap this in carpet. And in case you didn't catch it, I did make this inside piece out of clear. I wonder why I would possibly do that. Why would I make that out of clear? Hmm, you guys have any ideas? A special thanks to New Concepts for sponsoring this video. Learn more about the FBT battery terminal at the link down in the video description. And a special thanks to Lonnie, Ali, William, Marcos, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all these guys for making these videos possible. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.